It's a beautiful season again, a wonderful time. I have come to deliver another load of good news from the Word of God, the living Word, the powerful Word, the only Word that is true. The rest of our word, words cannot be compared to this beautiful Word. I come to you with a rare blessing that we find in the gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter for those who love the Bible, who love studying the word, who love going through the word. We are already excited to, because we can tell that uh, it is a chapter uh, that records uh, the parable of the lost son. Not only the lost son, but the parable of the lost sheep, we recorded in that parable, in, those, in that chapter, the parable also of the lost coin. And therefore, I want us to uh, derive very powerful lessons from uh, the three parables, uh, the three in one parables. And therefore, I have entitled the key thoughts of uh, these three parables, the sum thought of this parable as the three lostnesses, the three lostnesses. Uh, if there is no English word like lostnesses, may you accept it as a new entry in the dictionary, in the English grammar. I want to believe that uh, uh, lostness is a condition Lostnesses are conditions of being lost. Therefore, there can be some lostnesses as we shall discover in the three parables. I want us, therefore, at this time to bow our heads as we seek the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we invite your presence even at this hour. We are nothing without you. We are useless without you. And yet in your presence, within your power, Heavenly Father, we are able to do so much more. We can do anything that we set our hearts to doing. Heavenly Father, it's possible somebody is lost in some context of the lostnesses we are dealing with today. May you gather us from the three points of lostnesses and help us to come and fuse into one beautiful uh, family that is energy, energy, energetically enjoying a journey towards your very presence. Dear Father, bless us as we dig into your word. Bless us as we ask excavate the truths as we remove the topsoil to enjoy the gems of truth, the power of truth. Father, may you bless us indeed, not only for this moment, but for the rest of the days of our life as we shall be driven and guarded by these beautiful truths. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Uh, the three lostnesses. I want us to enjoy these uh, uh, very simple but profound principles. I want us to start off uh, from uh, analyzing and uh, looking at chapter 15 of the gospel according to Luke, 15th chapter, verses 1. The tax collectors and the sinners were also gathered around with Jesus, drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them, saying, What a man of you! Having a hundred sheep, if he loses one, uh, one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one uh, which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing, and when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my ship which was lost. I say to you, that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. May the Lord bless us for reading his word. Amen. Beautiful illustration here. Beautiful parable. We can then uh, pull out a few beautiful things out of this parable. Point number one that I want us to focus on or to uh, accept and realize as we go into this, uh, uh, this parable. Uh, these parables come as a response uh, by Jesus to a complaint uh, that had come from the Pharisees, uh, the men and the scribes, the men that were in charge of the church in the day. How dare he, Jesus, Eat and dine and enjoy uh, life with the sinners, uh, with the tax collectors. And therefore, uh, Jesus then responds with a very simple set of illustrations. So set number one is that of the lost sheep. Then he says, if guys, you are economically sound, uh, who of you, when he had a hundred sheep and uh, all of a sudden he realizes that one out of a hundred has uh, disappeared into the, into, the, into the wilderness. Then he says, won't that man immediately leave the 99 because they are self and bundled together and look for only the only one? I want to uh, acknowledge the fact that to me this uh, is addressing the Adamic fall in some way. Very beautiful, but at the same time very profound. Uh, innocence, innocently without knowing what was happening, the ship starts uh, nibbling the grass and slowly it catches a nice cluster of grass, another lump of grass, another cluster of grass, and uh, it gets carried away. There is ignorance in lostness, number one. There is innocence in lostness, number one. And there are many of us who are lost innocently, unaware that we are lost. There are many of us who are living life thinking that we are doing our best, thinking that we are enjoying the best of life, thinking that we are in the right path, but at the end of the day, we are slowly but surely drifting away from the master, drifting away from the shepherd, drifting away from the safety and the security of the fold, drifting away from principles that have defined our lives, 
is drifting away slowly from principles that have anchored the reality of our lives. Innocently, we are drifting away. And two, there is a simple unawareness. To my, in my understanding, there is a, this little ship does not see that he is getting lost. He is carried away in the chores, in the day-to-day -day business of living. He is carried away, she is carried away in the day-to-day -day nibbling of the grass. But the more grass she sees greener, as she sees greener on the other side, the more he is drifting away from the voice of the shepherd. The shepherd is before the sheep, but the sheep is enjoying the grass and slowly drifting away because of the cares of the day, the cares of the world, the cares of life, the cares of need, the cares of trying to supply and enjoy the little bits. You see the little bit and see the little bit. It's as if life is coming together. But in principle, the life that seems to be coming together is pulling you away from the master shepherd. You are so focused on the business of the day, so focused on the education, uh, the desire to acquire some knowledge, the desire uh, to graduate. You are so focused to a point where you have lost balance, you have lost uh, even the energy, uh, the, uh, or the energy that sustains you spiritually. This is the lostness that I have discovered in the parable number one. The lostness number two that I have also discovered is in the lostness of the coin. The coin is a very valuable commodity. Maybe let me read the very text where we find the coin story, the, by the, the coin parable. The word of the Lord spoken by Jesus say, reads thus, Or oh, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until he finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me. Rejoice with me. For I have found, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over the one sinner who repents. Wonderful, wonderful illustration. Lostness number two. And uh, the, 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 the Pharisees must understand that Jesus is excited not to have Pharisees in the house, but to find the sheep that was lost. Jesus is also excited to find the coin that was lost. This is the principle about the coin. This is the lostness that we find in the coin or by the coin. Uh, one fact that we must agree and concur on, definitely, the coin is of value. Maybe it's a golden coin. Maybe it's a silver coin. I don't know your circumstances. Maybe you are uh, the simple nickel dime. And at the end of the day, you are of value. This coin is of such value. But then the value does not matter. It is not estimable of value as long as it is lost. The most painful part in its lostness is that it's not lost out in the wilderness. It's not lost out in the streets. It's not lost out in some corner of life where it is too far from the treasure chest house, but from the treasure chest. It is lost in the house. Very painful. It is lost 
in the house, indoors, within the walls of safety, within the walls, lost inside the beauty of music, lost inside the beauty of preaching, lost inside the beauty of brotherly fellowship, lost inside the beauty of walking together with God, lost inside the beauty of knowing you have your brother's support, but you are in there, but so so far from the presence of these advantages. You are so much in the advantage, the point, but so far from enjoying the beauty of the advantages. So valuable. But who will know its value while it is in the dust of the house? Who will know its value? while it is not weighed together in the chest with the other coins. And let me tell you this, as long as the coin is not there, the dollar cannot be complete. It will always remain a cent short, a coin short. And let me be sweet enough to say, as long as we do not have you and your participation, your full value in the house of the Lord, my brother, my sister, we are missing out on powerful things. You are cheating us on powerful things. You owe us your participation. You owe us your true value. You owe us your prayers. You owe us your true participation. You owe us your smile. You owe us your hug. You owe us your presence and presence active, not presence that is desolately hiding and sitting in the back seat. This is lostness number two. You are there, but you are not there. You are present, but you are totally absent. You are there, <laughs> but you are accumulating dust. We never hear your thoughts. How will we know where you are wrong in your beliefs? How will we know how to sharpen you? How will we know your position emotionally when you cannot say what you are going through? When you cannot say what you are thinking? When you cannot say your interpretation of uh, simple things that you find in the Bible? How can we know how to help each other? How to complement your thoughts? How to also simply appreciate you when you are so distant in the presence of so big, big a company of believers. Very present, but extremely absent. Very there, but never numbered to, uh, to your true value. Very there, but never numbered with the rest. You are just there because the brethren were asking about you. Why are you no longer coming? to fellowship with the rest of the brethren. You are there because the brethren passed by your house just to challenge you a little bit and say, we miss you in the house, please come back. And you just came for the sake of the brethren and you sat in there and you never said much, you never said anything, never did anything, never sounded anything. And all you did was just to make sure you are there and to prove them wrong, that you are not afraid to be amongst them and yet you are not even contributing. You are not edifying nobody, including yourself. The coin is present in its absence. The coin is absent in its presence. Whether it is found or not found, the coin still remains a coin, but at the end of the day, its true value is in relationship with others. And let me be honest with you, you are cheating on us because as we learn from the word of God, Miriam could not edify the church, neither the church could move an inch, nor the cloud of fire by night, nor uh, of fire by night, nor the, uh, the pillar of fire by night, nor the cloud uh, by day could not move an inch until Miriam joined the rest of the family of believers and they started their 
journey to the promised land. You are cheating on us. We seem to be enjoying fellowship. We seem to be dancing to the right tune. We seem to be singing in the right notes. But as long as you have not contributed, we haven't even moved an inch. You owe us that inch. You owe us that movement. The lost coin. Very present, but cannot be weighed together with the rest. I love the approach of Jesus Christ. He says, you sweep the house. But the beauty of the story is that the owner of the house sweeps the house. And he uses very simple methods. And one of these methods is the preaching of the word. He sweeps the house. And sometimes he may speak things that discomfort you, things that make you feel uncomfortable, things that make you feel unappreciated. But at the end of the day, he is sweeping the house because he is seeking valuable coins that they may come back into to the chest. He wants them into the coffers. He wants them into the chest where they can be weighed together with the rest. Then finally, the most miserable lostness that we find is in chapter 15 and going further down from verse 11. I will not read this one. You will read it for yourself as we, as we shall be meditating on this word after the presentation. A simple but powerful and the young man, he knows the right language to approach the old man. The young man knows the right language to use as he approaches his father. And he says to his father, give me, give me my share while you are still alive. By principle, yes, of course, in our view, the young man is killing his father while he is still alive. The young man says, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his uh, livelihood. I love that part. He divided his livelihood, his very life. He broke his life into palatable and manageable pieces and gave this young man. This is the most deliberate lostness, volitional choice. Deliberate and by choice, one walks away from the grace, one walks away from the power, one walks away, turns their back against the redemption, one walks away from life, one walks away from the songs that gave him the very essence and the core of his faith, the first songs that gave him the enchantment to move forward even when things were so painful, he could move forward as long as he hears we are marching to Zion a beautiful beautiful Zion but he walks away from the beauty of all that deliberately by choice this is a child of God who has begged uh, not begged who has demanded of his father of all the blessings and by the way this boy is not far from the real life that we live by and Jesus when teaching us in Matthew chapter 6 on how to pray he teaches us to pray in the language of this boy he says when you say to you when you pray you must say to your father give us this day our daily bread not begging but commanding and demanding he is using the right language but for the wrong motives he wants to walk away with the inheritance he want to he wants to literally gather his father's livelihood to plunder his own livelihood to destroy himself he has prayed, the Lord has answered. You have prayed, and in many ways the Lord has answered. He has blessed you with resources. He has blessed you with an inheritance. But remember, the inheritance is not supposed to be yours and yours alone. It is supposed to be multiplied, and others should benefit. They are laborers in the house. They still need the resources. They are, your brother is also there. He still needs the resources. There are a lot of other people in the neighborhood who are suffering, who need those resources. They are not for your personal use only. They are for all to advantage and to benefit from. The boy picks all that he is given. 
and he walks away like the lost ship, but this time it's deliberate, step by step, far and further, further and further away from the sound of the voice of his father, from the sound of the prayers of his father, from the sound of the desire for his father, for his son, from the sound of the desire for his father, for safety, from the command and the marshalling of laborers and the security guys of this home uh, that may keep the, his sons safe. But this boy walks away from safety deliberately, by choice, volitionally. But it does not matter where he's going. The heart of the father goes with him. The heart of the Father heavily weighing against all odds. It is slowly following the boy. And the Father remains prayerfully asking and petitioning for the day that the Son will return. The Father sees him leave, but the Father is not excited by his departure. He's already anticipating his return. You may have lo been lost. You may have chosen the toughest part to walk away from grace, to walk away from the love of your Father, to walk away from the warm embrace, to walk away from the principles of truth by deliberate volitional choice. But your Father awaits and he knows you shall come back and soon you will return. He believes in your return. He believes he has loved you enough that you will come back. This is a man who has tasted the grace of God, but he has deliberately walked away from it. For fame's uh, purposes and for fame's reasons, he has walked away from the joy of the salvation and the safety of his father. For populist, populistic tendencies, he has walked away to appease and to please friends, but at the expense of his own soul. For financial gain, he has sacrificed his own life to look so rich, but at the expense of something and somebody. He walks away as though he is walking to life, only to discover he is walking to death. Each step far from his father makes him vulnerable, leaves him insecure, leave him, leaves him exposed. Every step we walk away from the presence of God, we are vulnerable, we are exposed, we are totally exposed. And it is grace that secures us even when we are walking away from grace. God is long-suffering. He is patient unto us. His long suffering unto us that none may be lost, but all of us may find eternal life. My brother, my sister, you are killing us. We are waiting for your return. Home is no longer home until you are back home. Home will never be sweet home until you take your seat in the family table and you make your contribution. Even if you may come shattered, you may come tattered, you may come torn, you may come back machiated, you may come back stinking, you may come back sickly, you may come back diseased. It does not matter. Return home. It is time to come back home. It is time to come back home because the trumpet is about to sound. All signs are pointing towards his second return. He is coming. He's coming. Surely this I know he is coming. The very fact that you are tired of living in his presence tells me that you are, he is about to come. Do not tire. Do not be deceived. Do not be, for God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever we sow, we shall also harvest. My brother, it's time to come back home. I'm not the best person to call you back home, but I'm representing the best God to call you back home. The best Savior to call you back home. It's time to return, and you return not tomorrow, for tomorrow is given no one. In this very moment, as you receive this word, come back home, dear son. Come back home. The lost coin is found. It's waiting for you to join. And we enjoy the melody of the songs of home. We also have been found. Those that have innocently been lost, who never knew any better, who never knew anything sweeter, who never knew any truth, who have been deceived that it is the white man's uh, teachings that are in this word. It is not the white man's teaching. It is the word of God. Come back home. 
Let's enjoy the beauty of the word of God. Let's enjoy again the fellowship with one another. And the Bible says the day finally dawned. When the young man made his steps back home, I don't care the time it took that he make up his mind. And for your own information, we all are as far from blessing as our decision. The moment we choose is the moment we start enjoying already the benefits of our choices. The moment he decided to return, I will arise and go back to my father and say, Papa, I've messed up big time. I'm not even worthy to be son. I'm not even worthy to be equal with my brother. I have come only for the safety and the comfort of home as a servant, not as a son. But the father had another thing on his mind. And the Lord is so gracious. He always has another thing on his mind. If he teaches you to forgive 70 times, seven times a day, how much more of God the Father? And none of us has ever erred against another 490 times a day. We have only erred against each other just a few handful times, once a day. But still the term, the word says forgive. And how much more if God can teach a human being to forgive so much and so abundantly, how much more does he forgive? If he has forgotten what you did last night, how can he also remember what you did last year? He is as good as you come to him. He is as sweet as you come to him. The young man came home. Having wandered far from home, he came home and he came to the comforts of home. And the very first thing the old man did was not to ask him, where have you been? The very first thing that the father did was to embrace him, was to hug him, was to give him a very warm kiss, even if he was thinking pigsty material, but still the father hugged him. Even if he was thin and so gaunt, the father hugged him and welcomed him home. We are waiting for you, your father in heaven, your father who owns the body, which is his church, which is the body of Christ, is waiting for you. You are a missing part of the body of Christ. He wants to make sure you are as comfortable, you benefit in the nutrients that flow in the body of Christ. You owe us a return. Come back home. It's no longer time for lostness. It's time to be found. This last one says, find yourself. Your bearings for home you already know. Welcome home in advance. As soon as you make that decision, the Father is waiting already. May the Lord bless you as you make a decision for the best of your life. And the best of your life is in the Lord, is in the word of the Lord. I know so many have cheated you. I know so many have lied to you. I know so many have deceived you, uh, but do not allow anyone to deceive you no more because the Father has better things in store for you. May the Lord bless you and bless your family and bless those who are connected to you. As you make that decision, remember you are not impacting yourself. You are impacting the rest of your brothers that remained at home. You are impacting your father. You are impacting your children to come. You are impacting the workers that remained at home. You are impacting the future resources of the family. Come back home. We need your contribution. May the Lord bless us as we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, release a special anointing upon each member that has heard this beautiful message. Each member of our society, each member of our community, each member of our country, each member of our, of our continent, each member of our world who will receive this message. And may they turn, Heavenly Father, from the heaviness of life to the sweetness of life. Because you say, come all ye that labor and are heaven laden and I will give you rest. It's time to come home to rest. Bless us in this decision. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kumusha, oh kumusha, 
kwa kasuru nunguka hakuna usiku mangana ibasi tino na uyo musha tino uchembera musha usina kurwa Kushika Kumushayo Ndotinzwa Muntewe Kutindo Fungane Musha Tino Fanta Kachema Kutindo Fungane Musha Tino Fanta Kachema Bakari Kumushawa Manodi Daiza Urombo Shemefu Hajiso Pitimo Onika Inodiwa Iriku Musoro Shall we run? 